Hello and welcome to our brand spanking new YouTube channel. It's our sixth video so far. It's the 6th of July 2023 and I am going to recount some of the events that happened on this day in African history. Events that will potentially shape the future of Africa. So we're not just going to look at our history as Africans and African descended peoples. What lesson or what lessons has our collective history taught us and how can we forge the way forward? Okay, so before I continue, if you're here for the first time, welcome. If you haven't subscribed yet, just subscribe, like, share, turn on the notification bell so that you receive updates of our video uploads. Again, if you're returning, welcome back. If you haven't subscribed as a returning visitor, why not just subscribe so that you receive updates of our video uploads as well. Before I carry on with today's video, let me recount some of the events that happened yesterday. You can go check out the video. Um, so, on this day, Emancipation Day is commemorated in the United States, especially in New York. Okay, and uh, just find out more about it. Just watch uh, yesterday's video. Also, John Igodaro was born on this day. Find out who he is. He is a Nigerian. I'm going to give you that bit. And they kept Cape Verde Islands. I discussed their independence yesterday as well. And there's, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Rwanda as well. Cecil John Rhodes. Find out who he was. He was featured on this day, July 5th. Okay, so July 6th, let's get cracking with the events that happened today in African history. So on this day, July 6th, this country called the Comoros gained its independence. 137 years of French rule ended on this day. The official name is Union of the Comoros. Prior to achieving independence in 1975, it was a member of the French colonial empire during the 19th century. Also on this day, in 1964, Malawi gained its independence from Britain. The Federation of Rhodesia and Yasaland under British authority between 1953 and 1963 included the country of South East Africa. Yasaland became Malawi once the Federation was broken up and its independence. Also, on this day, just a couple of years later, 1966, the same country Malawi became a republic with its first president, Hastings Kamuzu Banda, pictured right here. July 6, 1966, Malawi also ratified a new constitution which, of course, established the nation as a republic. Banda, the lone contender, won the election to become the nation's first president for a five-year term. The new agreement gave Banda broad executive and legislative authority and established the MCP as the only legitimate party. Also on this day, this dashing young man known as RMD, full name Richard Mofe Damijo was born. The year was 1961. If you haven't seen this guy's movies, go check them out. He is one of my favorite actors on the planet, not, not just in Nigeria and Africa, on the planet. The way he carries himself, uh, go check him out. Richard Mofe Damijo had previously served as Delta State's Commissioner for Culture and Tourism. Now, Delta State, for those of you who are not Nigerian, Delta State is one of the states of Nigeria, one of the 36 states. So Nigeria has 36 states and one federal capital territory. So he served as the state's commissioner for culture and tourism, a well-fitting portfolio, I would say. He received the best actor in a leading role, Africa Movie Academy Award in 2005. I'll take that again. He received the best actor in a leading role, Africa Movie Academy Award in 2005. At the 12th Africa Movie Academy Awards in 2016, he was given a Lifetime Achievement Award. So that is good old RMD 
who was born on this day in 1961. Also on this day, the Nigeria Biafra War erupted. The war began in the early hours of July 6, 1967. The federal forces entered Biafra in two columns, over 3.5 million in the Igbo. So in the Igbo simply means Igbo people, people of Igbo extraction were killed. Every Igbo family is thought to have lost at least one member during the conflict. Now, the guy pictured here to the left is the late uh, Ojuku. Um, he was the leader of Biafra. Biafra was the uh, secessionist part of Nigeria, um, inhabited almost entirely by the Igbo tribe, um, who wanted to secede from Nigeria due to um, them feeling neglected, feeling that they were not totally part of Nigeria, feeling that they were being taken advantage of. So Juku spearheaded this um, ambition to remove, basically excise Biafra from Nigeria. Biafra is in southern Nigeria, but that led to a civil war which lasted for three and a half years and uh, claimed the lives of millions, millions of mainly Igbos. So that's part of the Nigerian history, part of African history, and part of the history of the African descended peoples of, of the world. So hopefully we have learned from this conflict that it's better for us to be united. I know it's very difficult, you know, for some who are still um, pained by the events of Biafra and the, late, the, the recent events in Nigeria, and the Kanu trying to do the same thing that um, Ojuku did. Um, it's understanding, it's very painful, you know, but we all, we all need to forge together, we all need to come together and uh, fight for uh, a one Nigeria and move forward as a nation. Um, I don't think conflict or trying to leave the country uh, would do us any good. It's like a, a brother in a family deciding that, oh, he doesn't want to be part of the family anymore, you know. And we are one family, yes, we are brought together by the colonial people. Um, so, but we are together now, we are all Africans, let's forge ahead, you know, we can, we can do this together, we are better stronger, we are better bigger, we are better together rather than divided. That's my personal opinion. Okay, so let's move on to the next event that happened on this day. His name is Chief Samuel Lado K. Akintola. He was the Premier of Western Nigeria from independence in 1960 to 1966. He was born on this day in 1910. Chief Samuel Lado K. Akintola was a Nigerian politician. He was an aristocrat, an orator, a lawyer who lived from July 19th, so July 6th, 1910, to 15th of January 1966, as Oloye Are Ona the 13th of Yoruba land and Premier of Western Nigeria from the country's independence in 1960 until his murder in 1966, he was one of the founding fathers of modern Nigeria. Now, a, a little background into this. Um, I wasn't born then, but um, his murder must have happened at the beginning of the Biafran War. Okay, so the Biafran War civil war took place in 1966. So I'm pretty sure, 99.9% .9 sure that he was killed just before the Biafran War started. Okay, so last last but not least event that happened on this day again another sad story hopefully we learn from this conflict doesn't help anyone on this day in 2013 exactly 10 years ago boko haram gunmen attacked the government secondary school in the village of mamudo in yobe state of nigeria again yobe state is one of the states of nigeria it is located in northeastern nigeria so go check out the map of Africa, look for Nigeria, and zoom in on the political map of Nigeria. You would find out where Yobe State is located. At least 42 persons were killed in this raid on the government secondary school in the Yobe hamlet of Mamudo. The year again was 2013. Some staff members were also killed. Students made up the majority of the dead. So, sad. That story, I um, hope we are learning from our history that conflict doesn't help anyone. Conflict only drags us back as a people. 
So we need to forge ahead. We need to love ourselves as brothers and sisters and forge forward. You know, the time for lagging behind, for being the laughing stock of the world in most cases, that is gone. We need to forge ahead. We have capable hands on our continent to push our continent forward. Okay, thanks once more for dropping by. Um, do not forget to like, share, subscribe, turn on your notification bell so that you receive updates of our video uploads. Once again, my name is Sotonye Afiasimama. See you tomorrow, July 7th, for another Today in African History. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye for now.